Welcome. People have been asking me what is my forecast for Solar Cycle 25 in spite of the fact that I've been giving them about every month for the last year or so. So I've got, decided to put together a video that just deals with that particular question. What is my forecast for Solar Cycle 25? You must realize that this is a preliminary forecast based on very sparse data and it will get better and better as time goes by. So I'll give updates as that happens. When we go from one cycle to another cycle, we expect certain differences. Let's take a look at the sun over the last five years and compare what's been going on. These all were taken on the 1st of December of each of the years from 2016 to 2020. When you compare what the sun was like last year, in fact, for the last three years, with what's going on now, you can see there's been a major increase in activity levels. But when you compare it with the way it was in 2016 during the decay of solar cycle 24, you see there's also major differences. So let's take a look at what those differences are. So here I have two images of the sun, one taken on December 1st, 2016, that's the one on the left, and another taken on December 1st, 2020, the one on the right. There are some fairly obvious differences between the two of them. First of all, the range of latitudes that there are sunspots on. This, these dark and light areas are magnetic fields corresponding to sunspots. On 2016, which would be the decay of solar cycle 24, uh, the sunspots had concentrated towards the equator, which is quite normal. And now we have the outbreak of the new cycle where the sunspots are in much higher latitudes again. That's perfectly normal. In 2016, the northern hemisphere was dominant over the southern hemisphere. There was much more activity there. In 2020, at least until now, the southern hemisphere has been dominating the northern hemisphere. But the most important difference is, is in the polarity of the sunspot groups themselves. If you look at 2016 on the left, you'll see in the northern hemisphere, the dark areas, which are negative areas, are leading, followed by the light areas, positive areas. That's positive magnetic field. In the southern hemisphere, it's the other way around. We have positive leading and negative following. In the new cycle, it's the exact reverse. In the northern hemisphere, we have positive leading and negative following, and in the southern hemisphere, we have negative leading and positive following. For those of you that have been following my monthly broadcasts on the state of solar activity, we're very familiar with this plot. But for those that aren't, let me just explain. This is the sunspot number uh, over the last uh, 13 years. The yellow marks here are the daily sunspot number. The blue is the monthly average sunspot number and the red is what they call the smooth sunspot number, which is where you smooth the sunspot number over 13 months and take an average. And it's usually that that defines maximum and minimum. Uh, we can set the dates of minimum from uh, the lowest level of this plot. And the minimum between solar cycle 23 and solar cycle 24 occurred in December of 2008. The minimum between solar cycle 24 and solar cycle 25 occurred in November 2019. So that's almost exactly 11 years. Now one of the rules of thumb of solar physics is a normal length of between cycles is usually followed by an average cycle. If you have a short cycle then you have a larger cycle. If you have a a longer uh, delay between the two minima then you have a, a smaller cycle and that certainly worked out last time so this would by itself forecast that we'd have a maximum of something like about 150 which is the average for the sunspot number of the peak of a cycle but you can see something different here from what i've been showing for the last few years the curves so far have followed the SC prediction, which is the slower change 
in the sunspot number here on the right, the red dot, dot, dotted and dashed line. But with the activity we've had for the last couple of months, it seems to be more following the CM prediction, which is the much more aggressive model of solar activity. And so that would imply that our sunspot maximum is going to be actually significantly larger than uh, people have thought to date. I've marked here the level that the sunspot number reached during the month of November. And you can see you have to go back nearly three years to find an equivalent number during the decay of solar cycle 24. But far more important is how long it took for solar cycle 24 to go from minimum to that similar sorts of values. And it was two years, yet uh, solar cycle 25 has done the same thing in less than a year. So that also would imply that solar cycle 25 is going to be larger than solar cycle 24, perhaps significantly so. An interesting question is, does the rise rate of the solar cycle make a good predictor of the peak of the sunspot number? What I've plotted here is the rise rate of all 24 previous cycles against the peak of that cycle. And you can see it actually looks a pretty good relationship. The blue dot with a red circle around it is solar cycle 24. And you can see it was one of the uh, slowest rising cycles and therefore one of the lowest um, peak cycles that we've had for many years. So what does the current data on solar cycle 25, albeit relatively sparse, tell us about what's going on? Well, here's the range of uh, rise rates that we've had, depending on when you start and when you stop the uh, um, program. So at the lowest level we could say that it would predict a solar cycle of something like 120 but taking the, the highest possible fit for the rise rate you'd get something like about 190. So that's the range that we would have so we'd say it'd be something like 155 plus or minus 35. As we get more data, we can refine this estimate and that, that those error bars will come down and we'll settle on a much better value. Well, does the rise rate give us any indication of when the maximum will be? Now here I've done the same plot as before. The rise rate is on the left and then the time to maximum from minimum is plotted on the, on the x-axis. You can see that it's not such a clean relationship. It's more scattered to the plots and also it's not linear anymore, it's an exponential curve. Solar cycle 24 is indicated again with the blue dot with a red circle around it. So it was a relatively slow riser and therefore produced a relatively late maximum. The gray area shows the range of values possible for solar cycle 25, at least to date. So what do we get from this? So the fastest rise according to this, it could be under four years. The slowest rise according to this, it could be about five and a third years. So that would predict that maximum would be either in late 2023 or early 2025. So if I put those two forecasts together, I get this curve here. This is these ovals in the middle of the curve, which predicts a cycle of something like the mid 150s uh, peaking somewhere in 2024 with fairly large error bars. I've marked here what solar cycle 24 was, so this would say that solar cycle 25 should be a quicker riser than solar cycle 24 and also a somewhat larger cycle than solar cycle 24. Now I stress that we are using here very preliminary data. Now if we go along for a year or two we should get much much better data and be able to cut these error bars down quite significantly. But as everybody says, only time will tell. Here I've plotted the sunspot number, but somewhat differently than before, I've plotted the northern hemisphere separately from the southern hemisphere. The northern hemisphere is in blue and the southern hemisphere is in brown. Now you can see the peaks of the two cycles were about two years apart. And that's quite a long time. What if these two hemispheres were synced up better than they were before, like that the peaks occurred both at the same time? 
What would a solar cycle 24 look like? It would have been this. So solar cycle 24, if those two peaks had been simultaneous, would have been one actually one of the larger cycles that we've had, not one of the smallest cycles that we've had. So I would argue that solar cycle 24 was not all that low, it was just spread out more. So it's going to be critically important for solar cycle 25 how the two hemispheres are synced up this time around. If the northern and southern hemisphere occur closer together than solar cycle 24, then we could have a much, much larger cycle. If they're similar, then we'll have, again, a lower cycle. I'm, so I'm looking to see when the northern hemisphere uh, starts with a similar intense burst of activity as the southern hemisphere is shown. Uh, when we see that, we'll know what the offset between the two uh, hemispheres are, and hence whether we can expect the cycle to be less spread out or more spread out. That's going to be a very interesting thing to look for. So let's summarize all of this. My preliminary forecast is that solar cycle 25 will reach maximum in mid-2024, plus or minus nine months. It will peak at a sunspot number of about 150, plus or minus 25. The current activity burst may last for another month or so, though I, I would doubt that it's going to last quite that long. In the meantime, the sun will quiet down for a much larger burst that will occur in 2021. That's in the Southern Hemisphere. Critically, it depends on how much delay there is between the Northern and Southern Hemispheres. And unfortunately, it's too early to determine that yet. One thing I think is safe to conclude is that there's going to be no grand solar minimum. The sunspot number is already exceeding the level that some grand solar minimum forecasters said would be the maximum for solar cycle 25. I notice that many of them are now beginning to move their forecast for the grand solar minimum to the next cycle, solar cycle 26, and I don't think they're, they're going to have much more success with that than they are having with this one. Even if there were a grand solar minimum, there would be no little ice age. That linkage is completely fictitious. So until next time, stay safe uh, and goodbye.